could Trump win 50 states? No, I don't believe he probably could, but that is some of the words that you're hearing. Some of the surveys and some of the polls that are coming out is he is trending even in the most liberal states. Now, he won't win the most liberal, but when he starts trending in like Minnesota, in New Jersey, there's some things changing. Also, we'll talk a little bit about how the infighting is happening, how Kamala all of a sudden says she's ready, and to be honest with you, she may be the Democrats' only hope. Now, personally, I like Biden and Harris to run. I think both of those don't stand a chance against Trump, but I digress. I think that uh, the infighting has really started. I'm anxious to see what the convention is gonna say. Two more things. I, did you see the fact that we had a Russia hack that came against our veteran affairs and another department of the federal government? The question I always ask myself is, this was not just a Walmart or McDonald's or uh, some typical private entity, some grocery store. This was our government. So as our weak leader actually helping things like this take place because people are not worried about them anymore. Also, how shortage, how much of a shortage is the water in Washington, D.C.? You hear they're under a bull notice. You know, when bull notices happen and people are not used to having creeks and ponds and lakes and streams and collecting water, how dangerous could it be? And how long will it last? Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's okay. But when you give us a thumbs up, it does help us stay in the algorithm. It does help us share our message across this platform. And it means the world to me. So we humbly ask if you like this, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Remember, we do a giveaway each and every month. We just gave away uh, three things just a few days ago. Actually, it's going out in the mail tomorrow. We look forward to always having conversations with you and having our community grow. And hopefully we can grow together in gaining wisdom and a common sense approach to this crazy world that we live in. Now, a few things. Trump is actually doing very well in the polls. There's uh, polls coming out showing that even in states like Minnesota and New Jersey, he is actually winning. And then in liberal states where he's losing, don't get me wrong, he's still losing in places like California, New York, uh, and, and of course, uh, Washington and Oregon. However, he's trending up, he's tightening the gaps. Now, will he win those states? I do not think he will. I'm not gonna tell you that he uh, is gonna win California, New York. I don't think that's gonna happen. But I do think it's very good that he is trending up in some of these areas. And then like New Jersey, they're saying he could have a chance. He's winning by double digits in New Hampshire. These are crazy numbers, but it takes the fact of a weak leadership. So there's two, this is a twofold question. We need to ask ourselves, the national security risk of our country is dangerous because we have Biden leading. I mean, again, we have a bullwater notice in Washington, D.C., and they don't know what actually caused the problem. You've got uh, a hacker account trying to, uh, from Russia, trying to get into and compromise several federal emails, federal uh, guidances, and, and doxing, and it actually went through. Now, they said that some of the main information did not get leaked, but what they were saying is it still tapped into Veteran Affairs and another uh, department in our government. So it, are we safe when we think about that? Also, the fact of a weak leader, look at this. Now they have an almost, quote unquote, kind of like a NATO summit, but it's, it's China, Russia, India, Iran, North Korea, Vietnam, and of course the list goes on. They're having their own summit. Now, when we used to think about the G7 or think about these big NATO summits, it was like the most powerful, the elite, and you had to be invited to it to, to really say, have your say across the world. Now we look weak. All those leaders are, are in opposition and every one of those are fishing to probably lose uh, in all their elections other than like Italy. Uh, every one of them are losing to more conservative, less global pushes. So the question is, with weak leadership, what does all these other people see about America and about the West? Well, again, we're dealing with some things here. We actually see Hezbollah bombing Israel in the northern Israel boundaries. So now that's gonna cause another conflict, another issue to just keep on sparking in the Middle East to keep on growing even towards Lebanon. So on the first hand, you see a weak leader could cause some major problems with national security. I don't, I don't disagree with that. The problem is I don't like Republicans all of a sudden wanting to talk about it now. The Republicans, all these, these quote unquote conservatives and Republicans in the House are all voicing opinions that they should get rid of Biden. Biden needs to be thrown out, that the leader needs to be thrown out. Now, think about this. Trump is winning 
by double digits in some of the, the main states. He is dominating on poll systems. So are they when they when they say this, I understand when they're saying, well, it's national security risk. Well, you've dealt with it for three and a half years. You're almost to an election. Let the Democrats figure out what they're going to do. They don't need your help, Republicans. You tend to always put your nose where it shouldn't be. But that's wrong that Republicans are bringing this up. Yes, it is a national security threat, but it's been that for three and a half years. Now, on the other hand, you have the fact that Kamala is actually saying, I'm ready to step up. There were several reports showing that she was very dissatisfied when she heard Newsom's name and Whitmer's name. And her camp was going to use um, race and, and also the fact that she was a woman to say this was not right. So now I think the Democrats are in a catch-22. They know Biden is not popular. However, they know he's actually probably a little bit more popular than Kamala. However, she is the one that would assume leadership roles if Biden could not fulfill those. So I think they're in a catch-22 to figure out what they do. All the donors are pulling away. All the donors are saying, no, we're not going to support Biden. But all the politicians know the situations of the inner workings of D.C. and that without Biden, they have Harris. And I don't think they're going to think that's a better chance than what they have. So I'm anxious to see what the next coming weeks and months look like. Now, there's a new leaked video on Trump, and they were trying to use it against him. What happened is it actually come out and actually was a positive spin. He ended up sharing the leak too. The reason is not that I like him cursing, not that I like him derogatory speaking. I think people like his, his realism. I think people like the fact that he's just normally talking without all the political polish. And I think that's what makes him enticing and that's what makes him very marketable and that's what makes him likable. Even as a billionaire who really has never been you know, a normal American, normal middle-class American raising families and raising, uh, wondering how they're gonna go and, and shop at Walmart this week. He hasn't had that, but his likability with people and commonality because he can kind of speak the truth and he doesn't really shy away from it. So I think that's actually what people are liking. Now, we're coming up to a point where weak leadership causes a national security threat. We've seen that. Actually, our military bases in Europe now are on high alert. They're at the most elevated point uh, next to extreme than it can be because of this weak leadership. Also, the fact of all these wars going on. National security and a weak threat, the border, all that is a bad reason. And I understand when people say, well, we need to get by down. Well, you've waited too long. As McGregor said the other day, there's no point in trying to get him out now. The thing is either you move up the election or you deal with it for the next few months like you've dealt with it for the last three and a half years. So now we're at a point where Republicans need to learn to hush their mouth and quit talking about the 25th and talking about getting rid of Biden. Let the inner workings of the Democrats hurt their self because this is imploding right before our very eyes where the political class is saying Biden, the business class and the donors are saying someone else. And I think that's going to cause a major problem at the at the convention. I think when it comes to super delegates, I don't know if y'all watched House of Cards, and I wouldn't challenge anybody to watch it unless you're watching a clean version of it, an edited version, but if you remember, he, there was a point in House of Cards where they're at the convention and doing the same thing, open primary, and everybody goes crazy. Everybody's trying to figure out who's voting for who. I almost see that happening with the Democrats this time because I don't know if anybody's really behind Biden. At the same time, I don't know if anybody's really behind Kamala, but they have no other shot. Michelle's come out and says she's taking, she is not taking it. Uh, Gavin is, I mean, he is like the biggest cheerleader with pom-poms for Biden right now. And Whitmer knows she wants it, but Whitmer's not strong, not even in Michigan. So there's a lot to take place and a lot to transpire over the next few weeks. I don't know if I'd call it a October surprise. I think we're seeing a summer surprise right now. And Biden is, I mean, he's locked in. Remember, we don't give Biden credit to being a career politician. I don't like it. I don't even, I think he's not as smart as, as, as he should be, even when he was, quote unquote, at his prime back in the 80s and 90s. But do you realize from when, from when he was younger until where he went from local elections to state elections to national elections, the guy's never lost. He's been a career politician and has smoothed over a ton of people. Now, I don't think he's going to do it this time. But that's why I think that he's not going to get out because he thinks he can win. And now you have, listen to this, now reports are showing that Hunter Biden is actually helping him and going to his meetings and making sure that he is listening. Now, does that make you feel any safer, especially with national security? I don't think so. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this video. Will Trump win 50 states? I don't think so. I think he's probably going to be closer to the 38 to 45. But let me know your thoughts. 
is he going to win those? Is he going to win? And if so, how many states? Is he going to? Is this going to be a landslide like some of the pollsters are saying? I believe if we see at this same status quo, meaning Trump makes his comments, does what he wants to do, shakes some hands, kisses some babies, all that kind of stuff, and learns to not open his mouth too much and be too crazy, I think it's going to be a landslide, especially when the fact that the Democrats are imploding right before our eyes. And I love the fact that liberal media is now having to almost choke on their own words to actually talk about news and how serious this is with Biden. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. Again, we humbly ask that you give us a thumbs up, share this, and you know, comment below. We learn from each other in the comments, and uh, I love actually reading a lot of the comments and seeing exactly what your thoughts are on the situation that we're talking about. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless.